Hey guys! Today I want to talk about playing with the bow when you're in a band setting. I absolutely love doing this and so I thought I would talk about just some of the things that I like to keep in mind when I'm in this setting. And to do this, I'm going to demonstrate with two of my favorite songs to play with two of my favorite people, Losing You by Michaela Kahn and You Are More In Love by Colin Hauser. Now I have a link to both of these songs underneath this video, but both of them have albums on iTunes and I highly recommend that you check them out because they're really great and you should hear them. So let's go ahead and get started. Your main job here is to support the melody and to support the music without overpowering the singer. Um, and for some reason, when we pick up the bow, that's really easy to just overpower whatever's going on. We don't like to leave a lot of space and we overplay typically. So one of the things that I had to learn really quick was when to play, when it's appropriate to play, and when not to play, which is even more important, I think. Um, so my general rule of thumb is to wait to come in after two verses. And sometimes I break that rule. Sometimes I'll come in with a little noodling right at the beginning. Um, and sometimes I'll come in sort of halfway through the second verse. But in general, the idea is to give at least one, if not two verses of space just to give the singer a chance to sort of state their ground. Um, if you listen to You Are More In Love with Colin Hauser, I come in on the pre-chorus after the second verse. And it's nice because I feel like I can kind of sneak in um, with the other singer that's on that track, Catherine Christie, and it's not too overpowering. Um, another thing that you can do to sort of make it so that you're not overpowering is to find little spaces in the melody for you to play. So if you listen to You Are More In Love, again, Colin has these little breaks in between the melody that I like to sort of jump in with these tiny little um, noodles that we sort of came up with. So he'll sing something and then I'll, you know, something like that. And it doesn't overpower him, but it still adds a little bit of nice texture to let people know that I'm there, but I'm not, you know, the star of the show or anything. Um, so, one of the things that I figured out really quickly was that I needed to pick themes to play all the way through the song and stick to them. When I first started playing with some of my friends in some of their songs, I would just sort of be all over the place. I would play um, just whatever I felt like sort of that was in the key or not the key sometimes. I made a lot of mistakes. Um, but if you listen to what the guitar player is doing and you listen to what the piano player is doing, even what the drummer is doing, they're pretty much keeping the same thing going on with tiny little changes. And those changes are what's special and what people notice. Um, so in Losing You by Michaela Kahn, I start off with this nice theme over her melody. And I pretty much play that through the whole song other than when I have a solo and during the bridge and that's only because the chords change and it would sound bad. So, um, and it's the same thing with Colin's song, You Are More In Love. I have these little noodles, like I said, that go on and I do that through the whole song. And it's nice because you sort of have your thing going on and then um, when something changes, like you change the melody or, I'm sorry, you change the octave then people notice and it becomes a little bit more special. Um, so on that same note, when you're building, you want to change the octave and not in the way that we normally do. In classical music, when you get more intense, especially in solo settings, you sort of drift upward in the fingerboard. And this goes for violin, cello, viola, bass, horn, anything. You sort of go upward. But when you're playing in this kind of setting, um, I think it's a lot more powerful if you move downward. Um, so with Kayla, I started up here, and then as it got a little bit more intense, I moved it down the octave, and then finally, when she's just belting it out, I'm down here really supporting her and adding that width and that heaviness to the song. Um, so when you're building, you wanna make sure you're building in the right way. Uh, so a couple stylistic things, these are just things that I've sort of adapted to and figured out on my own when playing, in my experience playing, this is by no means law or anything like that. These are just ideas. Um, the first thing is vibrato. I use completely different vibrato when I'm playing in a classical setting versus when I'm playing with a band. When I'm playing with someone like Kayla or Colin, I 
slow down my vibrato and I make it a little bit wider. If you're playing like a solo piece, my vibrato is going to be... But that doesn't really fly, it doesn't sound great when you're in a singer-songwriter setting. So instead, what I'll do, slow it down, take it down a notch in the intensity level. And that just brings it down so that, you know, you don't really pierce through as much when you want to in classical music. You don't necessarily need to when you're playing in this kind of setting. And a lot of times, honestly, I don't play with vibrato at all. I think in Losing You, I didn't use vibrato until it got really, really intense towards the end of the song. And I think that can be really nice as well. Um, with your bow tone, I also use a different bow um, technique when I'm playing with singer-songwriters. Um, again, in classical music, if I'm playing something up here, my bow is going to be down here. But if I'm playing with a singer-songwriter, I want my bow tone to be kind of fuzzier, and I want it to be more spread. So I might experiment playing over the fingerboard, just to get that kind of um, intimate sound that I really, I really think that captures. So it's just something to experiment. Even when I'm playing something really intense, like all the way down here when Kayla's just doing her thing and, um, and really taking it to the next level. You know, it, it's tempting for me to get really intense and really dig in, but it doesn't necessarily need that. So play with that. Um, I'm not saying that's what you have to do, but I do encourage you to just experiment and try everything that you can and listen to yourself. Make sure you like what you hear. Um, finally, I like to keep in mind what range I'm playing in. Uh, with Kayla, you know, I was playing all the way up here, but she's singing really high too, so it doesn't really interfere, but just keep in mind that it can, especially if you're, if you're playing conflicting notes. For some reason, if I'm playing an A and she's singing a G, it's not going to sound very good, especially if it's these two notes. Um. It's not going to sound as nice um, as you might think it will. So just keep it in mind. Um, and then also, if you have the chance to take a solo, that's not always what's going to happen, so don't get your hopes up. Uh, because you're not the star of the show. Um, but if you do have the opportunity to take a solo, this took me a long time to get used to, but I like to start with the melody. Um, I have tried to sort of deviate from the melody a little bit, and in fact I did it when I recorded Losing You with Kayla, and I really wasn't happy with my solo. I think because my solo just didn't reflect what had been going on in the song at all. It was a completely different um, feel going on, and I think if I had stuck with the melody, it would have helped. In You Were More In Love, I just straight up played the melody, along with a couple embellishments. <laughs> You know, that's, that's exactly just the melody. And I think it's nice because the, the listener has heard this melody already, and so they recognize it, but they've heard it with the words. And so when you play it on your instrument, it's a completely different timbre, and it adds just something nice to three quarters of the way through the song. So I would start there and at least stick with the feel of the song. And that's the final thing that I wanted to talk about. Make sure what you're playing whether it's the solo or the supplemental material in the verses and the chorus, make sure it reflects the mood that's going on in the song. So both of these songs are a little bit on the sensitive singer-songwriter side, which is usually what, I, at least what I've been doing when I play with the bow. But you might have something that's more upbeat. And so if you're playing something, um, like I played on Fire and Lace, which is another one of Kayla's songs, which she has a video of, check it out. Um, I played a little bit more articulation, you know, it's a little bit more upbeat, so I did something like something like that. It wasn't that exact thing, but I just had more going on than just long tones. But if you're playing something like Losing You or You Are More In Love, keep it down a notch so that whatever you're doing matches the intensity level of who you're playing with. So I hope that all of this helped. I hope you have the chance to play in this kind of setting. It's very fun. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment underneath the video and I will answer them in the best way that I can. But until then, I will see you next time.